All right, I'm on hole number nine of the Northern Open Tournament. I'm in Tuesday's qualifying round in the rookie division. Let's go check them out. Hopefully, everybody's having a good uh, time. I know uh, I know a lot of people qualify on Mondays. I always use Mondays either as practice round or like day off and just chill out. And But normally, that's a great, great day to practice. Just go out there and not qualify. Make sure you don't qualify. Keep your score as low as you can until you get on those holes that you really want to want to practice that shot. Hole number two, Maple Bay. Hole number, or excuse me, hole number nine is Maple Bay. Hole number two. All right, this is a big, and I don't know. I actually don't have any. All I have is club and ball combos. I don't have any notes as far as like top spin, back spin, or any of that kind of stuff. I do have some elevations, but I'm going to go out there and kind of wing this hole and just see what it feels like just organically and play it like it's one on one and not have any clue <laughs> of what hole was coming. For the first time, I want to take this back right here, I think. I'd really, I, there is a rough bump that's up there on the green here. So if you can get far enough down, into this finger, you can get to this rough bump over here, or you can do a second bounce rough bump. And so we have some options here. So I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring my accurate stuff. And if I can't get up there that way, I'll just limp on. So the key thing here is, is not to screw the drive up. Because if you're in the fairway on the drive, in most of the spots on the lower fairway, you can get on or, or up real close. This is why curl is so important in some, some ranges of clubs. I, I always have looked at my bag as being like each club has purpose. So like you're... What are you trying to get done with your long iron? Like in the tour that you're playing, when you're when you're playing that tour and you played for a bit, you know, if you if this is why it's so important to record your own gameplay. <laughs> you go back and you watch you watch video and see what was really going on. Couple rings off. I'm gonna put on just like a half a top spin. Give me one, eking towards one, two, one, 100% 1, accurate club. Two, one, trying to hit it perfect. Don't try, do. Hitting it perfect. When you're picking your clubs out and you're on a course like that, my recommendation is to look at your bag and see like when you're on holes and you're having problems, like, is it that you have to take out the ones that you duffed? You have to figure that out, <laughs> you know, like giving yourself more room. It's more like every time you duff a shot and you end up and you know that you can't get on from there. Like, just think about like, what would happen if you were in the fairway, just like right off from that spot, you'd be bringing out some wood instead of some long iron. Or if you got lower developed clubs, a short iron, <laughs> I always looked at my clubs different. I wanted my whole goal was to try and get into my short iron range because my short iron was the most accurate club in my bag. And if I could get into my short iron range, then I had a shot. And some holes that are long iron holes, I usually played with a, a Saturn. I think that's a great club. It's a great utility club. That's one of the cool things about commons is they're great utility clubs when they get upper developed. Even a sniper is just a great utility club. I'm way short of that, but I can do like the second bounce rough bump. I'm 
going to do a plus 15, so 2.6 plus, I'm going to do a plus 10. So it's 2, 9, a little shy of 3. Hitting it perfect. Let's see if I can, I, this is a risky ass shot right here because you got to clip that rough. If you don't clip that rough, you're in trouble. <laughs> I don't know that if that was that it could go off the other side of the green. It is coming through there on a second bounce, so it doesn't get quite as much run as it does on the first bounce. And that was a plus ten percent. And I'll have to go back and watch, but that looked like it was in the zone <clears throat> where I was about halfway in there. The deal is, is that if you put, there must be, I'm, I'll have to move that around a little bit more because there's got to be a spot out there where I can get uh, a better read on how much top spin to put on that. And I have... I got to go back and this is why I record my own video because I can go back and I'm sitting here talking to myself and I'm sitting here looking at my notes and thinking about what I'm going to do on the whole. And when I go back and watch these videos and I go, okay, like, what was I talking about? <laughs> Oh, I need to switch to a Kingmaker instead of a Katana. Or I need to do something because I did something on that hole and it was like, yeah, that was the right move. So the next time I don't make that mistake again, it can save me a second or two or 10. That was close. Close. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Good game. Good luck. Good luck in the tournament. All right, that was hole number nine. So minimum score, let's talk about minimum score here. So minimum score in this tournament, every tournament in Golf Clash, minimum score is always minus 12. Minus 12. And this hole right here, if you bring out a, you can do this with a power three ball, but you can increase your odds if you bring out a bigger ball because you don't have to use any overpower. It's seriously a par four with a, one of the best shots at hole in one in the game. <laughs> it's a great opportunity to pick up your eagle, but you can also, if you've set yourself up to pick up the eagle, you could also set yourself up to pick up a hole in one. It's, it's a great shot. You have to pick that up. And the only difference is bringing out a bigger ball. And the game is owned, the our, the PGA is owned by a, a ball manufacturer. So think about golf clash is the PGA and Playdemic is a ball manufacturer. So that's the deal. We got to get that. So this is a nice, so this in this particular tournament, because of that hole, the minimum score is minus 13. And the other par four, which is hole number seven, it could be argued that this par four right here is also, it is harder. Even if you bring out bigger stuff, it is harder because you will have to use overpower. But this one for is for sure. So it could be argued that the minimum score is minus 14. Minus 14, do that out of the red. So like just the minimum score. So that means we're at minus 28 in the round. And so think about shots. There's some par threes out here. There's a lot of rough bumps on a lot of these holes. And so we have opportunities. Anytime we have anytime we have a rough bump opportunity, we have a really good opportunity to get up there. So I think the scores are going to be wild. <laughs> I have no idea where it can go from there. I mean, there's a lot of stuff laying out there. So I wouldn't be surprised if this tournament wasn't one of those tournaments that you shoot a minus 30 and you might come in fourth and you might win. <laughs> But I would definitely be thinking as a minimum of minus 13 and restriving for the minus 14. All right. That was the uh, 
Tuesday qualifying round of the rookie division. And the Northern Open Tournament. Thanks for watching.